All right, so you know what a scalar is, you know what a vector is, heck, maybe you've even added and subtracted vectors. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to multiply a scalar and a vector. Like right now. All right, so we know that a vector is a quantity that has both a magnitude, or size, and a direction. As it turns out, vectors can be multiplied by scalar quantities in order to make changes to their magnitudes. In this video, I want to explain scalar multiplication as well as walk you through a few examples so you can understand how this process works. Let's check it out. So I want to start by introducing the idea of a scalar multiple here. And to help you understand what a scalar multiple is, I'm going to use a quick, simple example. Let's say that we have a vector v that has some magnitude. It's this big. If I multiply that vector's magnitude by any number, and we'll call that number k, we're gonna produce a vector that is a scalar multiple of vector v. And multiplying that vector's magnitude by that scalar quantity k can either increase that vector's magnitude or decrease that vector's magnitude. So that's gonna make that vector bigger or smaller depending on the size of that scalar k. Now in this little example, if you take a look, you can see that this vector on the right is actually twice the size of the original vector v. So in this case, we can say that the magnitude of vector v has been multiplied by two to produce a new vector, 2v. So that's the idea with scalar multiples. You can take some number, multiply it by the magnitude of a vector and either increase or decrease its size. Let's take a look at an example that's gonna give you some practice looking at scalar multiples. So this example says, identify the vectors that are scalar multiples of vector u. Determine the value for k for each scalar multiple. All right, so here is our vector u, and we're gonna bring in a pile of other vectors. We've got vector a, b, c, and d. And our goal is to figure out which of these vectors are scalar multiples of the original vector, vector u. So let's go through these vectors one by one and identify whether or not they are scalar multiples of vector u. We'll start with vector a. So to find out if a vector is a scalar multiple of another vector, it's helpful to pick up the original vector and sort of place it next to the vector in question. And when we do that, we can see that vector u and vector a are parallel. They have the same direction, but they don't have the same size. Vector a has a much bigger magnitude than vector u. In fact, if we place three u's tip to tail, we can see that those three u vectors will make up one a vector. So we could say that vector a is three times the size of vector u, or vector a is a scalar multiple of vector u by a factor of three. We can summarize this by saying vector a is equal to three times vector u, right? So here, k is equal to three. Let's take a look at vector b next. So we can see that vector u and vector b are not parallel. And because of this, it doesn't matter what I multiply vector u by, I'll never be able to produce vector b. They might have the same magnitude, but they are not parallel. So we're gonna say that these two vectors are not scalar multiples of one another. Taking a look at vector c, we can see that it appears to have the same size as vector u, but it's traveling in the other direction. Now that doesn't mean that it can't be a scalar multiple of vector u. We can see that vector c and vector u are parallel. Remember that if you want to change the direction of a vector, we can just multiply it by a negative. Since the magnitudes are the same in this case, I can take vector u and multiply it by negative one and say that vector c is just equal to negative vector u. So in this case, the value of k would be equal to negative one. All right, our last vector here is vector d, and we can see that this one appears to be smaller than vector u. If we bring in vector u and place it next to vector d, we can see that two vector d's arranged from tip to tail will produce vector u. So we could say that the magnitude of vector d is half the size of the magnitude of vector u. So the value of k in this case would be one half we can say that vector d is equal to one half vector u.